Hi, my name is Phil, and I'm building a Chesapeake Lightcraft teardrop camper. The biggest puzzle pieces on the camper are the two parts of the bottom. I'm going to try to resist making wisecracks and doing my best to keep the wipe transitions to a minimum, even though the bottom has a part called a butt block. I'll just let you absorb that. <clears throat> okay, here's one of those I wish I had known then what I know now moments. If I had realized how convenient it would have been, I would have rounded over the butt block using my routing table. It is much more difficult to round over the butt block after it has been installed. Later in the build, you fiberglass cloth over it, so it needs to be rounded, and I think running it through my router table with a half inch roundover bit would have been better. It's important to have the bottom of the camper be very flat, so I laid a spare sheet of plywood on top of the trailer, and I used that as a platform to glue up the two sides of the bottom with a cheek of plastic on top to keep me from gluing the bottom to the plywood. I used the flat side of a spirit level to confirm that the bottom was flat all the way across. Epoxy, thickened with cellophyll, gets spread between the two halves and all over the... The two halves get epoxied together. And then the butt block gets screwed and epoxied over the crack between the two halves. I laid some mylar over the puzzle joints to protect my mallet as I tap them together. If you read the build manual, you have to conclude that the author was on a diet and was desperately hungry as he wrote it. This time, instead of peanut butter, your epoxy should be mustard consistency. The butt block gets spread with mustard consistency epoxy and then screwed in place with one and quarter inch drywall screws. I started with screws in opposite corners to make sure the block stayed aligned while I was screwing it together. In total, the screwing took about five minutes. I just eyeballed it. I didn't bother to lay out the locations of the screws. It worked out pretty well and the screws are temporary anyway. Once the bottom was epoxied together, I flipped it over, sanded, and then gave it a coat of epoxy on the side that eventually becomes the inside floor of the cabin. I forgot to leave a two inch gap around the edge until I was about halfway done. So later, I sanded it before putting it in the cabin. The gap around the edge is for the fillet and fiberglass tape that gets added to the inside once the bottom is in and the camper gets flipped over. The bottom gets a couple of coats of epoxy. When that's hardened, it's time to remove the number one mold frame, one of the parts of the cradle you began your build with. There are a few screws and stitches to take out.
bottom goes on top of the upside down cabin. A bit of shaping is needed so it's best to sit the bottom on some scrap wood and test fit each corner. I found that my rasp and my tiny dollhouse plane worked well for this. The bottom goes on top of the upside down cabin. A bit of shaping is needed so it's best to sit the bottom on some scrap wood and test fit each corner. I found that my rasp and my tiny dollhouse plane worked well for this. Once the bottom fits inside the cabin it gets screwed in place using blocks of scrap plywood. I cut up the number one frame into squares for this purpose. I found it was difficult to keep the bottom flush with the edges of the sides instead of slipping down so the tab on the bottom bottomed out on the cutout on the side. So I decided to match what was shown in the illustrations in the build manual. I used some wedges of scrap wood to pry up the bottom until it was flush and I screwed the blocks in place. The illustrations in the build manual show the bottom flush with the sides and show how they need to meet the outside edge. I laid out the blocks evenly around the cabin, pre-drilled some drywall screws, and then screwed them in place with a square of mylar in between to try to keep the blocks from getting epoxy to the cabin. Once that was done, Amy and I flipped the camper over and filleted and fiberglass taped the joint between the sides and the floor. This actually takes quite a lot of epoxy, so we kept up the production of thickened epoxy as we went. You are not just creating a large, strong fillet, you are filling in the gap between the side and the floor inside the camper. It's pretty tight under the galley flat, so it helps if you are flexible. Well, so far so good. The next thing to do is to remove the rest of the mold and glass and epoxy the exterior. That's another video for another time. If you're lucky, you'll get to see that butt block again too. <clears throat> if you enjoyed this video, or even if you kept shouting, Alexa, sing me a song about camping. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified when I upload another video. Thanks for watching.